Hello everyone, in this video we will trade cryptocurrencies with Binance API in Python. So in the last video I've shown you how to access crypto market data and what we'll focus on in this video is to send actual orders to the Binance exchange. So what we have prepared here is the API documentation provided by Binance which you can find on this link and also you can find the GitHub page for a Python connector so you can install the Python connection with pip and access the API directly from your Python code. So before we start, I would like to mention that all examples are taken directly from the GitHub example folder. So if you check this repository, you will find all examples how to send different kinds of API requests. And what we're going to focus on is this trade folder where we have the list of all trade operations that we can perform with Binance API. Before we can send orders through Binance API, we have to create something called an API key. And an API key validates the ownership of your Binance account. And to create your API key, we can go to binance.com and your client area, you can create your set of API credentials. But Binance also offers an option to trade on a demo account where you can practice uh, working with the API. And if you go to testnet.binance.vision, here you can sign up for an API key without having to sign up at Binance directly. To create our demo account and our API key, we click on Generate Key. And here we can provide our API key with a name. So in this case, uh, I will use Binance Test and I click on Generate. Now, an API key and a secret key has been created, so make sure to save that. And in case you're trading with a real API key on the Binance Exchange, make sure that this key is safe and not accessible to anyone else, as they will have access to your trading account. Now that the API key has been generated, I'm now going to show you how to use the API in secret key to use the Binance API. So from Binance to Spot, we import Spot as client. And here I've prepared the variables where you can copy and paste the API in secret key. So for API key, we go here where we've created our key and copy that and add it here. And the same will do for the secret key. So here we have two base URLs. If you're trading live at Binance, you would use api.binance.com. But as we've created our test account uh, on testnet.binance.vision, we will connect to this API endpoint. So to create our client to use the API, we will use client is equal to client, add the API key, add the secret key, and the base URL is testnet.binance.vision. Let's now run this cell to create a client. And after creating a client, you will have access to various methods. And the first I'm going to show you is client.account. And with .account, you will get data from your Binance account where we can see uh, some of your assets. So here we see that when you sign up with testnet.vision, you will automatically have some assets available already. So here we have some Bitcoins, some Binance USDs, Ethereum Litecoin, etc. Now I'm going to show you how you can send orders to Binance and there are various order types. So let's start with a simple one. And here we have some parameters to create a market order. So let's say I want uh, to trade BTC USDT. I want to buy at market and here I can also specify how much. So this is the quantity and to send the order, we simply use client dot new order. So this is the method and then you pass in the parameters and after running this, you then see the result that uh, the result was successful. We bought some BTC USDT at the current market price, as you can see, as the status has been filled. And if we now go back to the account data, right? So uh, look here, we have 0.996 Euro BTC at the moment. But if I run this again, this number should now be greater. And here we see we now own 0 0.998 BTC. So it's been incremented by 0 0.002, which uh, corresponds with the quantity here. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how we can send a limit order. And here we just uh, use, again, the parameters, BTC, USDT. We say we want to buy at the limit. And the time in force uh, specified to GTC, which stands for good till cancelled. So the limit order will be active until we decide to cancel it. 
and here again I specify the quantity 0 0.002 and now uh, the difference between market orders you have to specify the price at which you want to set the limit so here the price uh, the buy limit is set at 30,000 US dollars which means that if Bitcoin drops below 30,000 that will trigger the limit and again we will use client.newOrder pass in the parameters and then the limit order will be created so here's the result with the created limit order and how do we check uh, whether the limit order is there what we can do is we can use client.getOpenOrders and what this method does is it will show you a list of all current orders so our limit order should be visible there so let me run this and as you can see we uh, this uh, method here uh, returns all open orders so here this is the order id 2419847 which is the limit order and if you check it with the previous one they correspond so the limit order was created in this cell here is now visible by using get open orders all right so in the next cell i'm going to show you how you can cancel a pending order and to cancel pending order all you have to do is use client.cancelOrder here you specify the name of the symbol and then you pass in another parameter the order ID which is the number here so if I want to cancel this order I will just copy this number here pass it here and if I run this this limit order here should be cancelled so let me run this this is the response uh, so this was uh, this result is successful so if I run open orders again this list should now be empty because we've now deleted it. Great. So now this list is empty and we now have confirmed that cancel order works. And the last thing that I'm going to show you is uh, client.myTrades and this will just show you a list of transactions on BTCUSDT. So remember, we've sent a market order to BTCUSDT and here you can find all your transactions that you've performed on this symbol. All right, so I hope that you've enjoyed this little sneak peek into Binance API. If you're interested in the entire documentation and all the examples, I recommend checking out the GitHub repository. And also, I would like to mention that I will host this Jupyter Notebook on my website. So if you follow the links in the descriptions, you can download this Jupyter Notebook and test all these endpoints yourself. Thank you for your attention, and I'll be back with another video.